one um, convening that I definitely would, would have loved to dress up specially for because I have learned so much and it's been very exciting. Um, by the way, my name is Akwesi Edu. Um, he's my boss. Uh, he's the chair of the Board of Trust Africa. I'll say a few words about we didn't have time this morning. I also need to be his boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was coming to that, but, and I won't come to that. So uh, let me um, tell you the questions that we came with, or I came with. Uh, the staff of Trust Africa talked about this for many, many months, and a number of questions kept popping up. One of them is, what are the narratives in North Africa? What are the stories? What we hear from the media, obviously, is uh, not everything. Now and then the media will have people talk and tell their own stories. Uh, some of us have traveled here in and out. But we wanted a space where several narratives could come out and we could dig a bit deeper and get a sense of the spirit and soul of this revolution, of this change, whatever we call it. So that was very important for us. Um, the second question, which I sort of mentioned earlier, is what should the outsiders do? Now, some of us are insider outsiders. Uh, Trust Africa is an insider outsider. We're based in Senegal, we are an African foundation that does this sort of thing. So we are, you know, we are with you, we are part of you, but we are also an outsider at many levels, and I'm sure you know what I mean. Uh, but more, more than just Africa, we have other donors that we work with, some of whom are here and I'll mention that later on. But the question is, what should outsiders do? Yesterday, um, on the way from the airport, on the day before, I think I lost uh, my bearings a bit. But uh, Professor Tabi Aina, who is the board member, and I, we met at the airport. We were actually in the same aircraft, we didn't see each other till we landed. And the driver who picked us up and was bringing us here said, You know, when we kept asking, in fact, we didn't keep asking, I just asked a simple question then. Half, half the drive, he talked about the revolution. And he had very uh, insightful analysis, very in-depth and insightful analysis. I mean, I think the guy belongs in the, in the think tank. But one of the things he said was, well, you know, it's one step forward, two steps back, it's very complicated, and we have to do it ourselves. In a sort of statement, in the last bit, we have to do it ourselves. It's our thing. And last night, Jerry, my board chair, was saying they were having a very spirited conversation at the airport. And some gentleman walked up to him and said, Oh, you guys are really very engaged. And he said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what do you think? And the guy said, You know what? If only the foreigners would just shut up and get out of here. <laughs> and let us, let us sort ourselves out. So I, I assume that it's not, um, you know, it's an important question. What should outsiders uh, do? What can we do? The third question we came with, the staff side, is what can we show our board? You know, our board is in charge of how we spend our money and our agenda, our vision, our mission, what we should do, what we shouldn't do. And we get away with a lot. I can approve grants up to a certain point and so on in the program. Folks go out and they decide what they want to fund. But now and then we need to show our board that you know all that uh, investment or all that uh, means something. And we haven't done a lot in North Africa, but this is the second convening. We're looking to do more, we've done a bit. And so our board members are all here. And part of what we intended to do was for them as we get to really understand the narratives, as a way of understanding what role we can play as an outside institution for the board to really be energized, passionate. I think some of them already are. Or they, I think everyone is, but they needed to really get 
that spirit. And I'm so glad that the passion with which um, many of you spoke and making time to come. I know how busy you all are. Uh, traveling far to come. And those who have been here in uh, Tunisia and in Tunis, it's not been easy. That I can assure you that you've made our work, our meeting, the staff which I lead, You've made our work easier when we have to make a pitch to our board members that we need to do more in North Africa in response to all these excitements. Finally, let me um, just say two things about um, what I have picked up. One is um, a point I made earlier, which is that the change as everywhere, the revolution, is a very dialectical process. Uh, in, you know, um, in philosophy, they say you have a thesis, you have antithesis, and you have a synthesis, and the synthesis becomes a thesis in itself. And at every, every stage of it, there are contradictions. Nothing is ever finished. The Quran actually has a, a statement that nothing is ever finished. And um, I think the Bible may have something similar. But from every angle, it is clear. Now, this is a marathon. This is going to be a long, long term thing. And our interest as Trust Africa is to figure out once we know what role we should play as an outside institution to, um, to accompany you. There are two things that, um, in that sense, in terms of the dialectics of this, are clear. One is, I think, uh, a serious point uh, research showing that the um, agents of change, the youth, the women, the social media activists and all, are not necessarily the controllers of the power shift or the power that comes after the change has happened. So there's a disconnect. And um, the, drivers, the drivers point to me, to us, uh, Tade and I, as you was wrapping this here, uh, also it's a very important point, which is that um, often it takes the same amount of energy and effort to safeguard uh, successes that you've achieved as it does to actually extend the successes or you know, in other words, when you score a goal, it's not like in soccer, you score and it's scored. You sort of have to keep, um, you know, you have to make more effort to save that what you've got. And so whatever comes out, I hope um, we will do two things. One, a bit of future scenario building, thinking about what the future is, what are the trends, and how we can stay ahead of the curve. But secondly, that we will not take anything for granted that has been achieved. And even if all we did was safeguard some of the achievements and did nothing and stayed behind the curve, I think that would be the worthy use of our resources. Um, and then the final uh, point is the next steps. The next steps, one is that we, Trust Africa, we will, the staff, we go to our board. Tomorrow we have a board meeting, and I'm sure this will come up. We we'll go to our board make a case. The second is that there are other donors that are interested. Two uh, colleagues here, Sabelina, if you can raise your hand quickly. Sabelina is with the Foundation Center. He is the boss of everyone. He's also her boss. Um, based in Brussels, and Massimo, is Massimo still here? Yeah. Massimo, can you stand because you are a big man? So that everyone can see my, Let me wear my battle glasses. Yes. <laughs> well, Massimo, this man is a very important man. So, uh, I sit so, down. So, so is uh, Sabalina, a very important woman. But uh, they, they are here, they bring in many other donors. Uh, the day after tomorrow, I think, for three days, we'll be traveling around uh, Tunisia. We end up in Tunis, um, and there will be more discussion of this. We would also like very much to continue this conversation. This is the second 
friends in Cape Town and here. So we will explore the possibility of having some electronic forum discussion. Um, I can promise it will be efficient, but we will figure out some way of doing a virtual conversation, continue this conversation and explore ideas and reflect more. Um, and finally, no, I've said finally three times. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.